Our whole idea is let's have fun and let's build lives worth living. And on that note, Gene, what oh do my you think God. of our next speaker? Our next speaker, uh, let me tell you, he can hit a golf ball about 500 yards. Now, he doesn't know where it's going, but he can hit it 500 yards. That's hilarious. And he invited us to... Hey, he's gotten better. He's gotten better. He invited us to one of our, his events in Key West about five years ago. And some, some person like Veronica Figueroa was there. And uh, it was neat. You and I were there and we spoke yes. to him. But he is, an, a, he is uh, an influencer. That's what I would say, first of all, and a family man. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That was Key West, by the way. Another, yes. We were watching the World Championship long boat races, the fastest yep. boats in the world, from the pool as they were racing by. Remember that? Right. That's good times. Okay, so here's the deal. Jay, I met Jay 20 years ago, maybe 1999, 24, I don't know, a long time ago. He was a hero back then at Craig Proctor. Craig Proctor's talking about this guy, Jay Kender, number one Cobalt Baker agent in the world, like 99, 2000, something like that. I was so impressed, I flew to Oklahoma City, got in the back of a hay truck, and <laughs> rode a lot in some military town. He took me to this first class restaurant, the only one they had in Lawton. It was the Golden Corral, or the Golden Buffet, or the Golden Bonanza, or something. But he was so gracious, and I just watched him for a day and shouted him to see what he was doing to sell 600 homes a year, back when nobody was selling 600 homes a year. He's always been a rock star, and today he's going to blow your mind. He's our Grand Slam round uh, Muhammad Ali, Babe Ruth speaker. He's going to end this event. Get on your feet. Come on, get on your feet and give a warm welcome to Jay Mr. Jay Kinder. Yeah. Come on, baby. Rock it. Love you. Woo. What's up, baby? Oh, I love you. Thank you so much. I love you, man. What's up? How's everybody doing today? Are y'all glad you came? Right? You guys are sitting in front of the opportunity of a lifetime, aren't you? Right? So, first of all, it was the Golden Corral, number one. And um, I, didn't know, I didn't know if I was batting cleanup or I'm batting ninth, but I'm here to deliver for you guys. So, I'm super excited about what I'm going to share with you. Um, been at EXP six years, went to an event very similar to this, much smaller at that time. And um, Rob Flick, I got to meet everyone. Brent graciously took me and I met Glenn, I heard the vision. I saw it, I saw the vision, I saw what was possible. And then Rob Flick showed me his revenue share check. It was like $156,000 a month at that time. And I said, tell me how you did that. And he went on to tell me exactly how he did it. And so me being the normal entrepreneur that I am, like many of you might be, and I'm gonna help you with this, not to make the mistake that I made, I went and started studying everything I could learn about how to really do agent attraction because I didn't really know if that was going to be the right way or not. And then I go study all this, read all the books. There's a great book, by the way, I highly recommend called Building an Empire. And uh, it is literally the playbook for how this process works or how it should work. And then I read all these books and met Brian Carruthers who wrote the book and came back and then I watched Rob Flick's videos that they told me to watch. And it was exactly what Rob Flick had told me to do. So a year of my life went me trying to over-entrepreneur this. So my goal today is to help you not over-entrepreneur over this, okay? Um, how many of you feel like you're missing some steps to the process in order to execute and go take advantage of this opportunity? Okay, well, I'm the process guy. And that's, you know, coming from Lawton, Oklahoma, I'm not the smartest kid in the room, but I always sit next to him, okay? So that's what I'm known for. And I try to figure out what is the process. I try to break it down and understand it. I'm a really good copycatter. So, you know, we, Jay Bram used to, he's one of our mentors, he used to get really mad at me because I would say, you know, we would say copycatter number one, this is copycatter number two, over, hey, I got something here, this is really good, you need to try it. And we would just copy, and that's how I became really good at real estate. I found people that were doing what I was trying to do, and I listened, and I did exactly what they said. That worked in school when I sat next to people that were smarter than me, and I figured it would probably work in, in life. And so I, that's how I found success is this modeling success, guys. It's not that hard. It's find somebody who's done it and then can teach you the process and then go do it exactly like that. Don't over entrepreneur it. So that's the, that's the big mistake that a lot of us make. So I'm going to share with you guys how we built an organization and how we lead an organization of 9,000 people. And then I'm going to show you the steps that you're going to use to do that. Okay. So again, 25 years in the business. I'm, I've been, I'm a dinosaur at this point. I was formerly number two in the world for Cobalt Banker. Um, Co-founded a company with Michael Reese called the National Association of Expert Advisors. Before that was Kinder Reese Coaching. We coached agents. We had a media company that did uh, radio and television for uh, real estate agents all around the country. Um, Sean Hannity endorsements, Glenn Beck, 
uh, Barbara Corcoran, all these different types of things. We helped agents build these really big businesses. But what most people didn't know about that big business that I built that was selling 500 plus homes a year was that it sucked, okay? It sucked. And I remember one month I had 50 something sales and I remember when we wiped the board off on the 31st and I was like, oh, we gotta do this shit again. Like every month, it was like, it was just so hard. It was so heavy and there was so much work and there was, there's, if you ever said this, there's gotta be a better way. So we said it all the time. There has to be a better way. There has to be a better way. So we're always looking for that better way. And thank God we found EXP because this is the better way. This is the better way. So that, that's the, that is the key is having the right vehicle to get you to where you want to go. We tried a lot of different things and building a big successful business is great. But really, what are we trying to get? We're trying to get our time back, time freedom. That's what we really want. We want enough money to be able to do what we want with who we want whenever we want, right? And this is the way to do that. So five years can go by in the blink of an eye. How many of you, you know, especially 25 years in the business, I feel like time's just like 10 years, 10 years. How did it go by so fast? And so the next five years, your opportunity right now that's in front of you could change the life of your kids and your kids' kids and their kids. That's how big this opportunity is. And so it's super important that you take advantage of it. Don't leave here and go back and do nothing. Go back, learn this process I'm gonna share with you today and take massive immediate action. I used to have a quote that was up on, on my wall when I was younger and it said, you know, entrepreneur live, entrepreneurship is living a few years of your life like no one else so you can live the rest of your life like no one else, right? That's what we want now. I spent a whole lot of years working harder than I needed to work because I didn't have the right vehicle. This is the right vehicle, okay? So organization size, so I live in Puerto Rico. Um, does anybody have one of those friends that calls you at 12 o'clock at midnight and says they're gonna come see you and the show's up and no matter what? Well, that's Russ, that's the guy on the side. Uh, he showed up at three o'clock one morning in Puerto Rico, he called me at my midnight, he said, I'm coming to see you in Puerto Rico. I said, all right. I said, he's drunk, he's not coming. And so he showed up, so he's in the family photo. But that's my son, Braden. he's here. My son, Carson, uh, my mom, dad, my two littles, Riggs and Kinley. My dad, Johnny, who got me into real estate. He's 47 years in the business now and at EXP, my best clothes ever. Uh, you know, he bought that Cobble Baker franchise and he wished he could have undid that deal, but um, unfortunately he had to wait a little bit longer to get in. So I got him last year. I was like, dad, I got 9,000 people. Why do you have to be like so long to convert? You know how I got him though? Brought him to EXP Con. Yeah, so pretty cool. So yeah, we live in Puerto Rico, same place that AJ showed you guys. It's been great. Uh, this is uh, actually this month that we're about to beat that. That was one of my best months we'd ever had. And that happens every single month and it's pretty crazy. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it, guys. It's not that complex. So the first year, and this is the thing, my first revenue share check, the first month, December, 2017, $13.33. I had 33 agents. That wasn't that inspiring, but it was still inspiring. I was like, all right, well, this is working a little bit at least, right? So the, the next four years, I was paid $7,857,000 in ref share. In 2022, I was paid $4.1 million in revenue share, right? This is a, a goal worthy of pursuing with absolute crazy intensity, okay? Go ridiculously focused on this, and you're gonna look back on your life, because that was the best decision I ever made, I can promise you that. You guys have heard all the stories, all the inspirational stories. Anybody can do this, guys. They pay $204 million out to the real estate agents on top of your commissions you're already getting. This is money that you could be earning. So going into the system here. So, so again, once again, that, like if you look at that, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that because I know I have a little limited time here, so I'm gonna get into the good stuff. So it's all possible thanks to the, 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 the business opportunity here at EXP. The opportunity the last five years was 90,000 agents. The opportunity for all of you over the next five years is the 410,000 agents that are gonna join us. And now that you've seen what you've seen, you know everybody's coming, right? Everybody's coming. I don't know what they're doing. Most, most of the people get here, sell a bunch of real estate, recruit a, f a few friends over to the company. Now you're getting paid to be here. You're not paying EXP anything. Why would you not be here, right? So it's a no-brainer opportunity. They're all coming. So that's, that's the opportunity. No other model could ever or will ever be the same as EXP is in the opportunity today. And here's why. Um, so if you guys watched the, uh, uh, the whatever we did the other day, the, the, the State of the Union address the other day, we talked about some of the data. It was really interesting, right? We're the, you know, the, this is, it's really hard to beat. Well, you know, who's, who, who's the other Amazon? Is there another Amazon Do y'all shop at? Cause I shop Amazon. So first mover advantage, we have that. We have lower operating costs and we are at scale, okay? 
we're, we're so efficient. It's incredible how efficient this company is. And we turn a profit. What does that mean? The stock goes where? What is the stock doing today? Right? If you're going to get stock in a company, that's great. These copycats can come around and do all the things they're doing. But if they can't turn a profit, your stock's not worth anything. Ask anybody that went to Compass. Right? <laughs> facts are facts, man. Look it up. So founder, employee, and agent ownership, 70% of DXP. Guess who runs this company? Glenn Sanford. Not some investors, not a board of directors that tells them what to do. We got the guy that had the vision in the first place running this company, making decisions that are agent-centric, not based on what the shareholders are gonna want, not based on what they can do to take from agents. You listen to the calls, you know, you listen to the calls that Compass does, the publicly traded, their, their, the calls that they do once a, whatever it is, once a month or once a quarter. You get in there and listen, what do they do? They're bragging about, we're gonna take another one. 1% away from agents. They're trying to take from agents, right? That's not where you want to be. You want to be somewhere where they're trying to help you get better, help you grow, not take from you. And that's the big, big, big difference between EXP and everyone else. So um, lower cost models don't profit. That's we've talked about that. Um, and they'll never have this, right? They can, do, they can try to copy us, they can try to do whatever they want, but they're not going to have the people that you've seen on the stage, the people that you've met here, the people that are committed to this culture of giving, helping, loving, helping lift people up and get to, that, get to their goals. They're never going to have that. So we're not going anywhere except for the top. So compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. I think uh, revenue share compounding might be the, um, the ninth wonder of the world then. So this is just a mindset I want you to get in. If you, if you recruited one person a month versus if you recruited two people a month, look at the difference of how big your organization grows. One of the reasons that we've grown as fast as we have is we talk about the opportunity. Not everyone's gonna ever recruit an agent, but they dang sure you owe it to them for them to at least know that this is a new revenue stream that never existed for them before, right? The, the only people that benefited from uh, recruiting agents were the brokers that owned the franchises and the whole legacy model. Now you have that opportunity. So you gotta share the opportunity. You gotta encourage people to set some goals around this. No different than if they're gonna go sell more houses. Hey, let's also add some passive income to that as well, right? It's just another revenue stream we didn't have before. So try to get your people into that mindset. Make sure they at least understand the opportunity. So, and this is really important. And uh, the longer I live, the more valuable this understanding this is. That, you know, a thousand agents, with, um, is, this is using an, a, an average of $658 annual with 30 plus L FLQA. Not 40, by the way, like that move. Great decision by the company, making it easier. Um, but 1,000 agents, 658,000, uh, that's $54,833 a month, right? So this one, so look, look at this. If, how much money would you have to have after taxes, you pay your taxes after taxes, to, to have, how much money would you have to have set aside in order to get that same $50,000 a month? You'd have to have $12 million. So you gotta sell a bunch of houses, save a bunch of money after taxes, not your living, after all your living expenses, and then you put that 12 million in somewhere safe and you don't make a mistake in your investment, and at 5%, now you're making the same amount of money. Are you on track to do that? with your investments, with how much money you're making. How long is it gonna take you? How many years would it take you to create a $50,000 a month passive income? Well, I did that math, and it was gonna take me the rest of my life and another 100 years to get to that, right? I wasn't gonna get there, it just wasn't gonna happen, right? So this is an opportunity that nobody else on the planet has except for people at eXp. Like, this is a real big opportunity. And so you gotta understand the math and what, what you're doing. So here's something I want you to all write down, I want you to all remember, and that is if you can get to 50, you can get to 500. And if you can get to 500, you can get to 5,000. That is a fact. So now it's, you're, we're gonna start getting to 50, but I promise you, if you follow this process, this is exactly how we did it. Pretty much everybody on stage will tell you the exact same thing, that's exactly how we did it, okay? There's little variances, but for the most part, this is the process. So, Number one key to Asian attraction is committing 100% to the system. If it doesn't duplicate, it doesn't matter. You guys have seen that and heard that throughout the last couple days. It is absolutely a fact. If, just because you could buy billboards all across your town and recruit agents, that does not help your group grow. That helps you grow. You got to make it something that everybody can do. The system has to be duplicatable for anybody who can do it. Any, anybody and everybody has to be able to do it. So what does it take? Mindset, skills, systems. So everything big starts small. It's not gonna feel like you're growing very big. You know how many agents I've recruited since I've been here? A little over two agents a month, but I've been doing it for six years. Two agents a month, that's it. Doesn't sound like a lot. I feel like I haven't been doing much actually, but I'm telling you, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a lot. 
So two agents a month for six years. If you did that, that's the kind of opportunity this is. So everything big starts small. If you want to change the size of your revenue share group, change something you do daily. This is not something you do once a week, once a month, when you feel like it. You have to do it every day, right? You brush your teeth every day. Why don't you work on agent attraction every day? It'll be worth it, I promise. You can buy new teeth. So um, <laughs> it's, all, it's, all about, it's, all, it's all about you, mindset. So be coachable, be humble, be obsessed, hard work. Take massive action, confidence, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm sells, man. When you show people and tell them, listen, you gotta see this. You ain't gonna be able to sleep tonight. And that's how I felt. I was pacing the floors like, I think this thing, is this real, man? I can't believe this thing. Like, this is unbelievable. Is this really real? Right, you gotta get people excited. And that, that is infectious. People want to be excited. They want opportunity. They want it. They're burned out, man. They've been doing it the same old way forever. So get them excited about it. So get fired up, commit to working on your growth mindset daily, surround yourself with positive people who support your vision, set goals and track what you do daily. You are selling EXP and the entire group of people that are all here to help support you. There's not a problem in real estate anybody on the planet has that we cannot help them solve, period. You've seen everybody up here, dude, this is the biggest group of badasses I've ever seen. Like there's not, there's not a problem you can encounter in the business of real estate that we cannot help solve. Right, and we're all incentivized to help each other. That's so awesome, right? So there isn't a, oh yeah, so I already said that. All right, here we go. So there, this is what it's gonna feel like, right? <laughs> I feel like most of my life, this is what it felt like. So you know, be relentless, man. You're gonna, get the, you're gonna get it, okay? No matter what, have that mindset. So the primary skills that you have to have, you have to be able to find prospects, invite prospects, and follow up. You guys understand that? Makes sense, right? Same thing as real estate. So finding prospects, there's people that you know and people that you don't know, right? You guys agree with that? Make a list of the agents that you know. Do not skip this step, okay? It will be very painful for you to learn all the people that joined that, knew, that you knew that you didn't ever talk to because you didn't ever make the list. And we sat on a panel uh, a couple years ago and all of the top people that were on that panel said the same thing. We should have done better at making our list because all of our friends are here, but we didn't call them, right? So. That, that's a big, big deal. The people that already know, like, and trust you are gonna listen to you. They're gonna be the easiest ones to start a conversation. So don't skip this step, right? Um, this is the wealth chart. This is what Rob Flick told me to do. So what did I do? I did exactly what he told me to do. I printed it out and I put it on my desk and I had to look at it every day. And all of a sudden it was staring me in the face every day. And I was like, okay, I better talk to somebody about this or I'm not gonna ever recruit anybody. So this is the wealth chart. You print it out, put it up on your wall, set your goal for all levels, update it daily. Text it to someone in your upline so they know you're serious. I get three texts, maybe four texts a month out of 9,000 people. But you know what? Those people, I know they're out here working on it. It makes me want to help them. It makes me want to answer the phone when they call. It makes me want to do something to help those people. So do that so they know you're serious, right? It's a commitment. So make a list of all the people you know. Think big outside your market. Anyone that you're friends with on Facebook, anybody you know have a really good relationship that lives in another market, knows somebody that has a real estate license, start l using your sphere of influence and everybody you know, not just the real estate agents, but the people you know that have real estate agents and the markets that they're in. Maybe you have people that moved off to another state or whatever. So there's a lot of people you can make connections with, right? So agents who, uh, whose homes you show, agents who's, uh, who show your listings, cross-sale agents, agents you meet networking events, agents send out outbound referrals to, agents you meet at real estate conferences, agents you prospect, agents you meet in large real estate groups, LinkedIn, social media engagements. There's a huge list. And either you're gonna have that list and work that list, or you're gonna skip this step. I do not recommend skipping this step, okay? Very important. Right, eight step invitation script. What, this is the what to say part, right? We are inviting, that's what we're doing. We're not recruiting, this is, this is not recruiting, okay? Like that's the big misconception. Agent attraction is not about trying to recruit someone. If you are talking about EXP to someone, you are doing it wrong, okay? Really important, I get on calls, I did 999 calls according to my schedule once, a calendar thing, right? I looked at it the first year. I was like, holy crap, that sounds like a lot. I was like, man, I didn't even do three calls a day. That's not really that. Maybe I didn't work as hard as I thought. But I did 999 calls with, with three-way calls, mostly three-way calls, or people saying, hey, I really, well, how do I get going with agent attractions? So we built this, this training because I got tired of answering the same questions all over and over and over. Here's how you do it. So we're gonna invite to a private group presentation, a live presentation, to watch a video or to a live event or to a free training or to a mastermind call. These are, this is what we're doing. We're inviting people. We're inviting, that's it. You gotta just be good at inviting. You don't have to sell. You don't have to be able to present it. You just have to be able to get someone excited enough to take a look. Do you guys understand the simplicity in that? 
That is the key to all of this. You, anybody can get somebody excited enough to watch them, especially if they already know, like, and trust you, right? So that's an important part of the understanding. So invite to watch the video live presentation, how to double your business, add a new passive income stream, and create an exit strategy by partnering with us without ever having to pay for coaching, training, or technology ever again. This was the video we created. That was the headline that we used for the video where we introduced them to not, hey, come join EXP. Nobody wants to move brokerages. They want to go from whatever their A is to whatever their B is. Right? That's what they're trying to get to. Once you understand that, that's all they're trying to do. Well, where are you at, man? Where are you going? Where am I trying to get to? Show them you can, you can help them. So the script, be in a hurry, give us some sincere compliment, make the invitation. If I would you, the commitment, confirm the appointment, get another commitment, get off the phone. So here's how it works. So I don't have much time, Mike, but I've always respected you and how you do business. Let me ask you a question. If I could show you a way to add a new revenue stream to your real estate business, would you be open to that? If I text you a link to a short, they're going to say yes, by the way, that's an easy one, right? So if I texted you a, a link to a short video explaining an opportunity, would you at least take a look at it? And they say, yes. Okay, when would, you, uh, when would you be able to watch that by? And they said, well, I could probably watch it. I got a kid's soccer game tomorrow. You know, they're thinking in their mind, right? Don't give them, don't tell them when. Let them commit by thinking about when they can watch it. Now they're just making a, a, a commitment in their own mind. So they commit and they say, okay, so if I call, if they say Friday, you know, Friday afternoon, I said, okay, if I called you Saturday, you would for sure have watched it by then, right? And they say, yes. Then they said, yes, that's called the triple commit. This changed the game for me. People that wouldn't watch a video, wouldn't watch a, join a training, wouldn't come to you know, any, you know, any of the live stuff that we were doing. If when I changed this, the percentage of people that did it went through the roof. It went from like probably 40% to almost 80%. So that little triple commit is getting people to say yes three times, right? You guys follow that? Okay. So, um, so when do you think you watch my sofa called you tomorrow at five, da, 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 right? So um, if, and, that, and the, a really part, a big part of this was the if I would you. If I did this for you, would you do this for me, right? If I was to send you a video to show you the opportunity, would you at least watch it? It's a really key little script that you need to make sure that you're using, okay? So invite to a free training. I don't have much time, Mike, but I always respect you and how you do business. Let me ask you a question. My business partner is doing a free training on how to grow in a shifting market. If I could get you access to it, would you be open to joining on? Can anybody in the room do that? We can do that all day long, can't we? That's easy, right? So it's this Thursday at 12 o'clock Central, if I sent you a link to register, would you be able to make it? Would it be okay if I follow up with you and we could share your biggest takeaways, right? Again, setting up that follow-up. The easiest way to create a new relationship is to find out what they want and try to help them get it. This is the easiest thing I learned from Gene Frederick. Tell me more about yourself. It's the greatest question you could ask. Tell me more about yourself. And I like what we learned from Coach Burt, which is, man, what, you, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? I love that question, man. Everybody's trying to do something, right? Everybody's trying to do something. Now tell me about your business, man. What are you trying to do? Man, they'll unload on you. They'll tell you everything they're trying to do. Now you're going to learn how to transition this to help get somebody else to help them see the, see the opportunity. Finding out their A, what they're at, where they're at, where they're trying to get to. No matter what it is, do you guys all believe that it would be easier to do it if, here at EXP than it would be to do it anywhere else? For those of you who've been doing this a long time, we all know that, don't we? Right? This is way better. Right? So if they're here and trying to get here, we're going to be able to help them get there faster. We're going to be able to help them get there with more of their life and more of their time back. Um, just so many reasons why this is going to be a better fit. You don't need to have to explain what those are to them because you're going to lose them, right? You're going to lose them if you try to explain it because there's so much, right? You, can, you know, trying to understand this business model, this is an educate process. So like, if, let me give you just a, a comparison real quick. So how many of you have seen Flex Seal commercial, right? When they painted the screen door on the bottom of that boat and drove across, we all instantly understood what the hell that did, didn't we? I understand Flex Seal. That's why they can do an infomercial and sell bottles and bottles and bottles and bottles of it, right? It's easy to sell because they demonstrated it. This is an educate and inform process. There's way too much information that they need to understand before they're ever going to really truly get it. You guys get that? How many of you went through a similar process? How many of you watched a handful of videos before you ever joined? Anybody? That's it? Some of you are really smart. Y'all said, I'd have got it all right away. I just came and joined right away. Well, most of us, we, we, we waited, you know, three or four people had to tell us, and then we're just dodging people like, what the hell is this EXP thing? Like, they don't even know what it is, but they have to be, they have to be informed and educated before they can make a decision. And so it is a more difficult sales process than selling Flex Seal, but that's okay. You just have to understand that we have to get them to a place where they have chosen to educate themselves so that they have a little bit more information. Now you can move them to the next step, okay? 
So um, there you go, what are you trying to do? Tell me more about your business. Um, this is the needs analysis that Dave Knorr did. I absolutely love this. Um, when I get on a call with somebody that's consumed enough information that I would consider what, what, what I would consider a sales qualified lead if I was talking about any other industry, um, it's a sales, sales qualified means they've consumed enough information to get on a call, right? So they're, now they're ready for a needs analysis and I can start asking questions, learn more about their business and be like, yeah, man, how much are you paying? Where are you at now? What's your, what, what are they charging you? Okay, are you getting stock? No, okay. Or do you have any passive income coming in? No, okay. Are they helping you with your lead gen? Do you have technology? Um, you know, are you, how much are you spending on your, on your lead gen right now? Oh, 20 bucks a lead? Well, if I could show you how to do it for three to five, that would save you a bunch of money, wouldn't it? So like, this becomes really easy if they consumed enough information. It's a no brainer, right? Like when we get on the call, we know it's a no brainer. I don't care where you're at. If you're, unless you're an agent selling five homes a year and you do not want to sell any more than that, there's no possible way that this should not be a yes for you, right? There's just no, there's no, there's no mathematical way to not, to not see that. And that's what we try to get them through on these three-way calls. And I'm gonna show you how to set that up. So if you haven't, haven't met, recruit through, run out of people to talk to, help the agents that you brought aboard make their list. This was a game changer for us. Understanding that you have people that have come aboard when you don't think you have anybody to talk to, that they're not talking to, that they can make a warm introduction. You can recruit through them and grow your organization. You're looking for people that are looking for you, right? Like, well, like Curtis showed up here, the, the black Labradors. There's black Labradors out there that you're not talking to because you don't think you have somebody to talk to. If you got one person that's come on board or 10 people that have came on board, they all have relationships. They're either doing this or not, but if you help them recruit that person, they're gonna win, they're gonna stay, they're never gonna leave, and you're gonna also win as well, right? So recruit through your people. They have a list too. Make them give that list to you. Make them make introductions and you can make those calls. Um, so would you rather talk to new recruits or, the, or the, the, top, the top 10 sharpest, most ambitious prospects or 10 random people who may not have those qualities? You know, tell me who are the top people you know that are badasses that you think would be great at this. Let me call those people. Call the people that scare you, that you'd be afraid, that there's no way they would go. There's no way they're gonna say yes. Call those people. Understand that no's lead to yeses, right? We know this, we make calls to leads all the time. The, the, his, you know, the historical percentage of leads that convert and pretty much everything from ZillowRealtor.com, Facebook ads, whatever it is, it's all what? What is the percentage? Anybody know? One to 3%, right? Like if you're really, really good, it might be 3% or it might be 1%. So that's it. You've got to talk to a lot of people in order to find somebody who says, yes, get comfortable with that, man. Let's get fall in love with that. You got to fall in love with that. No, man, one step closer to the yes. You got to change that frame of mind. Not everybody's going to get it. And you're going to be like, is something wrong with them? I don't know why they don't get it. Some people just don't get it. That's just what it is, man. We're real estate agents. They're not all the smartest. So that's just the, that's just the, that's the industry. You know, take a look around, man. Like, not in this room because we're all here. But like, walk around your office if, if you're not a DXP and tell me you're not. There's some people that it, they, they, they ain't too bright. So that's just what it is. You say, learn to say next and go on to the next one. All right. So you have not recruited someone until you've helped them bring a friend. We get all excited when we bring some on board, we help them get started, get them plugged in to everything that we have to help them grow their business. And we're genuinely trying to help them with what are their next steps. When they join, what are we gonna to do to make sure they're at, the value is added instantly? Um, and then you need to help them find a friend, okay? If they recruit someone and they get a check 90 days from the day they joined that came out of nowhere and dropped into their bank account, they are gonna like that, okay? So help them recruit a friend. Make sure that, that you're not leaving them out there to not do this. You gotta take control of that opportunity and help them go bring somebody, right? So, um, follow up. So when you're following up with someone and they, they watched the video, came to a presentation, really, this is a key question. I used to ask a really dumb question and I would ask them, what did you think? Well, that's a dumb question because people don't think a lot. You know, <laughs> sometimes they don't think very good at all. So people would tell me what they think. And I'm like, this is, that's not what I wanted to hear. So we ask a better question. What did you like about what you saw? What happens in that conversation then? They, 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 they start thinking. I can, you can hear it on the phone. You go, the wheels are turning. You go, I really like that revenue share. I really like the stock. I really like the technology. You start to get to understand what they liked about what they saw. We don't want to ask them what they didn't like, right? We want to ask them what they liked about, they saw, about what they saw. So three-way calls. I can tell you right now, I can go into my organization and show you the people that got to a thousand people within my organization, they followed this process to the T. It's the most important thing. In fact, I'm, I'm embarrassed to tell you how few of these I do anymore because people aren't getting in my calendar. You guys all should be leveraging me. 
and putting me on calls to help you close people, okay? This is an absolutely crucial step in the process. And I had two calls with two, what I would consider whales. One of them's here, what's up, Wayne? Um, and Kevin, thank you for putting them on the call with me because that, that, they're here. I talked to them on Friday, they're here. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a people that take action, right? I want people that take action. I want people that wanna run, that wanna run with this, right? We're looking for those people, right? If somebody wants to just go from 20 houses a year to 40 houses a year, I can help you do that. That's fine, that's easy, that's cake. We can do that, but I want people that wanna run with me. I want people that wanna build something, right? That's who I'm looking for. So um, it's gonna be, you know, you, you edify the expert it, and you transfer the, the respect and influence um, and now when you get on a call with somebody who, when you edify someone, it's just saying, hey man, you need to get on, actually I got a script, I don't know, I just keep talking, but I have a script for it, so let me just give you that, how about that? All right, three-way calls, okay, it could be with anyone in your upline you choose to edify, it doesn't have to be somebody at the top, it could be anybody, so go into your EXP um, and look, look at who your upline is, call them, learn about what their skills are, what are you the best in the world at, find out what they're good at, and, and if they're willing to do three-way three -way calls with you, um, and then know who to match people up with. Some people are going to fit better with different stories and different backgrounds. And somebody that came, you might have somebody in your, that, in your upline that came from a Remax. You got somebody that's from, at Remax, you can put them on a call with that person. It's going to probably go a little better, right? So get to understand who you have to leverage in your upline. Um, this is duplicatable, right? Anybody can do this. So it's going to duplicate. And if, any, if everybody can do it, you're, we're going to have a lot more success. If it's hard, they won't do it. Position them in the expert and much more knowledgeable source. This is where you gotta let your ego go. Even if you're a great presenter and you can talk really good, it's not about you. When you try to recruit someone, it creates resistance because you're selling and they're resisting. Anytime there's a selling environment, there's resistance. You guys understand that, right? So if you're trying to sell them, they're like, ah, oh, you're just trying to recruit me. But if you're like, hey man, I mean, I can try to answer that question, but you know, I got this dude and they're so good, they're, you're gonna love them. They love helping people, they used to sell a bunch of houses, whatever their skill, whatever they're great at. So if I could get them on a call, would you jump on with them? And that's the script. So I'm glad you're interested. Now, you know I'm relatively new to EXP because I respect your time and expect you'd want to get the most accurate information from the best source. You should know I'm working with, directly with someone who's leading national expansion for the company. She knows how the big money is made here. You're gonna love her. She's fun and easy to work with, which you will see very quickly. But most importantly, she's also down to earth and just loves to help people. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try really quickly to borrow a few minutes of her time to pop on the phone with you and share some of her insights with you and answer any of your questions. Would that be okay? That's your transition to, to a three-way call. And then you bring someone else in. How many, how many of you in here have used that process and had lots of success? Okay, so this isn't a rocket. I didn't create this shit. I just tried to find it and put, distill it down to the principles so I could understand it, right? So this is the process. And so I'll just tell you guys a real quick story. You know, Dan Hilsman, um, was a great, great guy, he had a few calls. He, he said, one of the things he said on the phone to me in one of the calls, that, the few calls that we had, was he said, yeah, I don't know about this revenue share thing, but you know, it sounds really good, but you know, I'm gonna have better technology, it's gonna be cheaper, you guys are gonna coach me for free, I don't have to pay for that anymore, so it's kind of a no-brainer for me to join, so I'm gonna go ahead and join. And then he followed the process, and he went to his broker, and uh, he said, what do I tell him? I said, tell him this. I said, tell him, hey man, I'm thinking about leaving the brokerage, um, I wanna send you this video, would you watch it and tell me if you think I'm making a mistake? <laughs> This is a true story. The next day he meets with the broker, the guy comes in, it's not the owner, so it was a hired broker. Um, and he says, man, I think I'm coming with you. <laughs> and he did, <laughs> and he did. And then 60 more agents followed after that from that brokerage over the course of the next year. And, and, and it, we did three-way calls. I did all of them. So I had 150 three-way calls with Dan Hillsman. Um, it wasn't always Dan and, and a prospect. Sometimes it was Dan and James Massey, Dan, Jan, Dan and Levi McDon McDonald, Dan and Andre LaFountain, who's sitting right up here up front. Up front, that's what I'm talking about, my friends. Still here at the events, we're, do we're following a process. That's why we're all here. We understand how this works, right? So they, they did three-way calls. We did them over and over and over again and then until they didn't need me anymore. They knew what I was gonna say every time. They started doing that for their groups. Their groups are now at 1,000, okay? Now it doesn't require me, it doesn't need me. If they need me, I'm happy to do it, but they're doing it for their groups. That's how they're growing it. And that's watching, it gets confusing when you see up here like, man, mate, should I do YouTube? Do I need to get Instagram following? What the hell do I do, right? Like there's all these things that they, they kind of get a little bit you know, confusing as to what you should be doing in order to grow an organization. And you can do all of those things, but this is the process you should be following, right? It's difficult to build a YouTube channel, okay? That's not easy, that's, that's harder to execute. And if you do, that's great, but you're gonna teach everybody in your organization to build a YouTube channel? 
It's not going to happen. Okay? It's a great system, but very few are going to be able to execute it. So this is easier to do, right? So the follow-up, hey, I'm glad you're here. Okay, that's the same one thing. I had two slides of that one. So three-way call agenda, we share our background, our story, tell the story about why I joined, uh, meet, uh, mention the success we've had, mention the many success stories across the entire group. It's basically what I'm doing to you guys right now, if you haven't noticed. Um, um, ask them the questions that they have, let them know what the next step is, um, and then if they're not ready, always set them up for the next engagement. We made this mistake a lot early on. When I get into a call, at the end of, a, at, at the end of one of these three-way calls, generally what happens, and this is so crazy, I heard it so many times, they say, okay, what's the next step? That's what they say, right? It's like, when somebody says, hey, well, you know, what's the next step? And you're on a listing appointment. Don't you get excited about that, right? Like, oh shit, they're gonna list it with me? All right, right? Like, I did something right, I said something right. So when they get to the end of, the, end of this conversation, then they say, what's the next step? If they don't, I like to ask them, I like to ask them when they get on the call, what did you like about what you saw, right? You heard that question. And then they tell me what it is. And then if we get to the end of that conversation and they haven't asked me what's the next step, I'm gonna tell them, hey, listen, it sounds like to me, this is important to you. Let's set up another call and we'll go through how we're gonna actually help you do that. And I'll grab someone else to jump on the call and we'll, we'll get clear on how we're gonna get you from 10 to 20 transactions next year. How we're gonna help you build, you know, and I'll ask the question, if they say rev share, I would ask how much money a year would you need to be making in rev share for you to say this was the best decision I ever made in my, in my career. And they'll tell you, usually it's really crazy. They almost always said 5,000 a month. But they, they say that, so okay, the next call we're gonna get on, because otherwise they go into this black hole, hole of follow-up where real estate agents suck at following up. You guys know what I'm talking about? When people ain't ready to do something, you're like, all right, I'll follow up with them never, right? You don't know what to do with them, right? So you, you, have to, you have to move them to that next engagement, super important. Don't let that call end in a black hole if we don't know what the next step is. Does that make sense? All right, I'm going fast because I have lots of slides and I'm running out of time. All right, so success and agent attraction is mindset, philosophy. Many people out there are trying to get people. That, that results in an appearance of need. You want your prospect, uh, you want to prospect people to see who you would like to let in, okay, to your group at eXp. I don't want to work with every agent, just the ones that have a growth mindset, right? I don't want everybody. There's lots of agents I do not like to work with. I think we all would agree with that, right? We're only gonna go get the people we wanna work with. So we're looking for the people we wanna let into this. Not, we're not trying to get people, we're trying to look for who we wanna let in, right? Different mindset, okay? You don't wanna appear like you're trying so hard to get somebody. So the systems, agent success, uh, sales success, agent attraction success, and then leaders creating leaders. These are kind of the, the, the three tranches of the systems that we, that we follow. So leaders creating leaders creating leaders. What we're trying to do is we're trying to lead somebody to do the same thing that you're doing. And if you're doing it and have a success and they're doing it and have a success and they're teaching that to the people that they bring on board, that is duplication. You guys get it? That's where it starts to duplicate. When you start seeing names that show up in your, in your back end of your system for people that you didn't even talk to, that means you were doing it right. Okay, because that's what will happen. They're, they're following the process. So massive communication equals massive income. You will get to a place where you're gonna spend 25% of your time promoting the next event, 25% um, following up with the existing prospects and people that you've been talking to, 25% of the time doing three-way calls or third-party closes for your team or contacting new prospects, another 25%. That should be what it basically looks like. And there's, we all get to a place where there's, there's kind of this bridge where you see, all right, I'm at 5,000 a month. If it gets to 10, I'm never selling another house again, right? There's a, there, for most of us that have been doing this a long time, there's a number, okay? There was a number that if I hit, I ain't never doing that again. And you know, because if you got it to 10, you know you can get it to 20 because you know how you did it, right? And it's coming in every month, whether you go sell another house or not. There's, there's a bridge you got to get across. You got to know what that number is and you got to work to get to that number, right? So um, you have to genuinely care about your team's goals and inspire them to hit their goals. You gotta genuinely care, this doesn't happen on its own. It doesn't happen by accident, guys. It does not. You have to absolutely know your team, know what they're trying to accomplish, know how you can help them and make sure you're checking in on them and help the builders build. That's the, that is the process. Um, a good leader knows their team's why. You must focus on developing people versus making sales. This is all about learning a new skill, guys. How, how many of you have, have, um, at one point did not know how to call expireds or FISBOs and then you learned the skill and started crushing it, right? That's a, it, it's a skill, right? It's just a skill, all skills can be learned, but this is a different skill. So you gotta make sure you're developing your people, make sure they're coming to the trainings, make sure they're plugging in and they're learning and developing this skill because it's not the same as selling real estate. So your goal is to duplicate yourself. Uh, your goal should be for people under you to out earn you. Curtis Johnson, my man, out earning me. 
pass me up. I'm so happy and proud of that. That's awesome, right? If you're winning bigger, man, who, who, hey, who, who could be mad at that? That's awesome, right? That's the beauty of having a system where we're all in alignment. Winning is, we're all winning together here. That's so, so cool. Um, what leaders do? Solve problems, turn challenges into positives. Don't complain and whine to your people ever, right? You know, throw, like, I think Brent said it the other day, he's like, throw, if you're going to throw up, throw up. Tell, tell somebody in your upline about a problem. Don't go whining and complaining to everybody in your whole group. That's just not a good strategy, right? Promote calls and events, run contests for your team, help people set goals, inspire, motivate using stories, teach how to's, read motivational books and promote the same to your group. What books are you promoting? What group, what books are y'all reading together? Hey, we're going to rebuild an empire. Who all wants to join in? We're going to learn this revenue share thing. Let's do that. On Mondays, we're going to report back and tell us what, and see what we learn. And we're going to report our numbers on Monday. Have some accountability with your team, right? Build team culture. Um, what leaders do? Always edify. Allow themselves to be led. We're entrepreneurs, and guess what? We're like bucking Bronx, man. You can't get us to do anything, right? We're out here trying to do everything our own self, like, you, but you have to be willing to be led. Assume that you're wrong in your thinking and just give in to, I'm just going to let them lead me and see how, see how this goes. That's a really important thing because we don't naturally do that. <laughs> That's just not what we're, how we're built. Be responsible, be accessible, reliable, caring, empowering. Um, help track, uh, help, how many, first of all, being, being uh, accessible. How many of you have ever been on a phone call with me in some capacity, one way or another at an event? Oh, yeah. No, that's it? Y'all, and the rest of y'all that don't have your hands up, just haven't gone to my website and registered a call. Y'all know anybody can get in my calendar any day, not this week because I'm blocked out for being here, but my calendar's wide open. I look at my calendar at the beginning of the day, and if nobody's in my calendar, I go play golf. Like, I'm here for you guys. Like, I have, um, people think I'm busy. I'm literally bored. Like, I need something to work on, man. Like, somebody put me on a call. Let me help you. Right? Thank you. So leverage me, man. Like, that's what we're here for. And, no, and nobody doesn't want to do that, man. That's how we win. The people that I see in my calendar the most are the people that I smile every time I see it. I'm like, this one's getting it. This one's doing it. That's what I like to see. You're not bothering us, man. None of us, none of the leaders, none of the people you've seen on stage, none of the people that spoke, none of the people that are winning at this level are not trying to get on the phone and help you. They're not. They're willing to do it. It's, it's how we grow. So do that. Um, becoming a better speaker and presenter, recognize others for their accomplishments, give away credit, accept blame, raise the lid for their team, sit in the front row, Curtis, connect massively and communicate massively. Um, we do recognition for our group. This is just some ideas of, so to kind of get a taste for, for how we're doing some of these things. This is now called the top 400 because our group got so big. But the top 200, we were measuring, here's what I want. I want them to all see it. Look, hey, here's the people that are doing the best. Here are the people that are bringing the most people on board. And we have a, a list. And you guys, guess what? Real estate agents are competitive, aren't they? How many of y'all are competitive? My only goal when I first got into real estate was to beat Tom King, who stole the first client from me, like in the first week. He was stole it from me, like stole him right out from under my nose. I was like, this is a weird business. How does this work? But he stole, he stole, and my dad owned the damn company and he still stole it. Like, what the heck is going on here? Like, it was crazy. I was trying to get him to help me write the contract. He stole the client and got, kept all the commission. I was like, this is ridiculous. So now my only goal was to beat Tom King. His name was at the top. I was like, I'm gonna beat his ass. That's for sure, right? <laughs> So that was my only goal, that, that was it. But we're all competitive, right? We all wanna win. So having a leaderboard, guess what? Everybody gets excited when they see it. Everybody wants to get on the leaderboard. When someone on your team ends up on the board, you're, you're giving them a congratulations, tagging them in the post. We're keeping that front and center and people seeing opportunity and seeing people win. You're sharing these wins. And I'm gonna wrap up pretty quick because they're gonna jerk me off the stage. But um, so Honey Badger Nation, we created a group and adding value in that group. We have resources, training, uh, every single, you know, all the events are promoted there. Go look at Brent's page, just copy what he's done basically because it's perfect. Um, all the different events that we've got going on, the weekly calls that we got that we're doing to, for agent attraction training, also for the, just for the, um, you know, selling more real estate, those calls are something every single, every single week that we do. And I, I will tell you, one of the biggest missed opportunities um, that most all of you are missing with, with EXP is KV Core is an extremely powerful platform. And I feel like when you get into real estate, you don't get leads right away, do you? Most people get into real estate and they're just like, all right, what now, right? There's no, but I tell you this, when you, you know, you may not have all the scripts, you might not be perfect, but if you got somebody to talk to, there's a chance you might sell something. They used to tell people when you got into real estate, it's gonna take you six months before you sell a house. Who can hold their breath that long? That's crazy, right? So you leverage, they get a tool, they don't have to go pay $600 a month for it that will help them with the managing and follow-up. 
We're promoting and recruiting using, using um, the understanding of we have about how to build a Facebook ad and help them lead generate, and we can plug them right into that when they move over and get them leads day one. I wanna see people putting deals under contract. We've had people join on a Monday and have something under contract the next week. Now that's different. And why is that important? Because I wanna tell that story, right? I, wanna, I want them to tell that story. So get them plugged in. If you wanna see what we're doing, um, the website, like how we're using it, just to understand it, it's called winbeforeyoustart.com. You can go through the webinar and just see how, I, that's how I'm using the tools that we have to get agents interested in having a conversation, right? So it's an example that you can go look at if you like it. At, copy it, rip it off. You know, just download it, do the same thing. I can care less, I'll even send you the slides. Um, so we're, we're bringing coaches and different people into the community. Modeling success, the multi-billion dollar earners all desire to be the best at their craft and excel in the following areas. Speaking and ability, motivating and leading, creating, creating leaders, storytelling, living a life like, that others want to model. Um, keeping the business simple, presenting the opportunity, attending and promoting events. There's, I don't know anybody in the room here that's not a DXP that hasn't really seriously considered it at this point, right? Like, I don't think anybody's leaving and not joining. I just don't believe that, because I've seen it happen too many times. You can't leave here and be like, yeah, I'm gonna go back to where I was doing it before, I like that better, right? That's, <laughs> no, that's not gonna, not in a room like this for three days, you're not, that's not happening. So get them to these events. Don't be a lone wolf, don't recreate the wheel. Plug into what your rev share group is offering and what EXP is offering to continuously add value to your group. Um, always focus on adding value, solving problems, and helping your team accomplish their goals, and you will build a massive organization. That's it, guys. That's what I've got for you guys. I can tell you this. The next five years of your life can be changed forever. Commit to the system. Let's go build. Thank you, guys.